Hello, you're about to hear Good Morning Seminole, our monthly signature event. Please enjoy. Good morning, everybody. Wow, it's great to be back here. I noticed on the table there we're doing the 50-year celebration of Lake Mary coming up. I hope you all go. Coincidentally, that's right about the time when David Mueller took office as the mayor here. Let me, let, I, I've covered uh, him for many, many years. I'm sorry he's not here to get mad at me for that joke. Uh, let me just bring up our panel because they're a wonderful bunch. I can't believe we have a panel that's this good. Uh, first of all, uh, first up is Shelly Allen. She's the co-founder of Sanford Porch Fest. An absolutely amazing festival that if you have not been, go. It's wonderful. You will love it. Yes, sit. I mean, you have walk-up music, apparently, but please sit. Uh, next, we have Jessica Pauly, a dear, dear personal friend. She's the owner of Pauly PR and Productions. And, I mean, the best way to describe her is that if you need to know, I'm putting on an event, and here's who I'm expecting to attend. What do I do? There's your girl right there, Jessica Pauly, everyone. A guy who's been a friend of mine for a very long time. Uh, he is the co-founder of Access Productions and Events. He's done just about everything in the music industry and has been a tremendous help to me as a reporter. Please welcome Sean Perry. Uh, another great friend of mine is next. He's a singer, he's a musician, he's a composer. He produces records uh, for Richter Records. He's on Life on Mars, but let me just tell you right now, if you have kids and you ever get to see the Barnyard Jam, please take your children to the Barnyard Jam. Not only will your children love it, but you'll be singing the songs for the next several months. Please welcome David Schweitzer. <laughs> Last we have, but certainly not least, we have the coordinator at the West End Trading Company, and I'm not sure Sanford would have even a music scene if it weren't for Dustin Getz. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna start, and we're gonna, we're gonna just kinda move down the line here, and what I'd like you to do is just kinda uh, give me the short answer. We'll start with an overview question. Uh, how would you describe, how did you get started in the industry and how would you describe your role? We'll start with Dustin. Uh, I started in stand-up comedy um, back in 2002 and from there I kind of transitioned into radio and from about 2006 or so I was in Clear Channel here in Orlando and then have moved my way to uh, downtown Sanford. How would you describe your role? Uh, I am the event coordinator for downtown Sanford, uh, Sanford Main Street, the West End Trading Company, Celery City, so I organize uh, the Hurricane Party, um, all of our St. Paddy's Day truck pull. If, if there's an event down there, I generally like to try to participate in some way, um, but uh, right now we do about 38 events a year out there. Now, thank you so much for the Hurricane Party, it's wonderful. Jessica? Um, similarly, I started in radio as well in 2002, three, four-ish. Um, I worked for O-Rock 105.9, the alternative rock radio station in town, and through doing promotions with them and events with them, I started getting into producing my own events. Um, and that kind of spun into working mostly in the Mills 50 area in Orlando and putting on events with uh, the Mills 50 District, uh, Will's Pub, and um, many of the other businesses in that area and in the Ivanhoe area. Uh, and it's grown from there. I've done events all over the Central Florida area and am hoping to expand into other cities in the coming year. Um, looking at uh, Tampa, St. Pete, Fort Pierce is a place that's asking me to do an event there. The event that I have been doing for years and we're about to celebrate 17 years of events is um, Southern Fried Sunday. So it's a celebration of Southern roots music and Southern food and community. Uh, and I would say that my role is to connect people, musicians, fans, uh, businesses, and uh, patrons. Shelly. 
Well, I would like to think that uh, my role in the music industry in Central Florida started back when I was seven, when my dad took me to my first concert. And since then, I've been sneaking into places like FBI and Wills and <laughs> long before I was of age. Just kidding. That's for legal purposes. That's a joke. Uh, no, but um, huge music junkie and have loved to see Central Florida through the eyes of musicians uh, in 2017 when we started Stanford Porch Fest. Um, it is run voluntarily by four women, and uh, we just had our event last Saturday. We had 70 bands on the front porches of 17 homes, um, and everything is 100% donated or volunteer-based. Um, we are waiting for our number from these, the police department, but last year we had 15,000, and historically over the six years that we've been doing this, our numbers double every year. So um, waiting for those numbers, waiting for our donation but amount to come out. But um, So my role with the organization is all of the organizational communication um, as well as the talent and performance booking falls underneath my scope as the co-founder and communications officer for the organization. Thank you, Sean. Porch Fest, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I got to go for the first time last weekend because I usually busy doing events that weekend. I mean, honestly, I, I did Florida Music Festival in downtown Orlando for 18 years, you know, 250 bands over three days, showcases, all that type of stuff. And the energy and just the enthusiasm that we used to have in downtown Orlando at that event, I saw it at Porch Fest. It was just amazing to see like, the community come together, mm -hmm. supporting independent artists, and it, it was just such an amazing vibe and amazing energy. It was really cool. Congratulations. Thank you. So, uh, I guess, uh, long story short, I published, uh, with my partner Rick Wheeler, we published Axis Magazine. Started in 1995, ran for about 25 years until COVID, uh, and Facebook and Instagram and the rest of them. But uh, we covered the uh, Orlando music scene, kind of the rise during the early years with David and Matchbox 20 and everybody and Seven Mary 3 and NSYNC, Backstreet Boys. So, seeing all those guys make it, I figured I could make it too, and I had absolutely no talent, so for... Working the telephone, so, but I did start managing an artist uh, out of Rollins, and uh, I, I had a couple of artists on Atlantic Records, Universal Records, had my own deal with Alan Defshan for a little while. And through those relationships, through the, the magazine and the uh, industry relationships, we started the Florida Music Festival, uh, which ran for 18 years, as mentioned. It um, showcased about 250 artists over three days, and it was the second, second to South by Southwest as the concept of music festival and conference, where we fly in all our friends from the industry, they'd see unsigned acts, have a few headliners at the end of the, the night, but we had founders from uh, Bonnaroo, uh, Warp Tour, uh, you know, presidents of record labels all coming to see these artists. We have some success stories, like a, a young Taylor Swift played when she was 14 years old, for a room of maybe like 100 people. Uh, we had our, other artists like Zach Brown, Pitbull asked to play, and then some guy that acted like their manager called for gas money, and we were like, dude, stay home, whatever. <laughs> Ugh, forget that one. But uh, no, we had a lot of great success stories. And I joked one of the reasons I'm here is because I had the uh, founder of Bonnaroo for the weekend, and I got a golden ticket to go party backstage and all that at Bonnaroo, and I gave it to Alan. So he, that's, that's the reason I was invited. But, but uh, more relevantly and, and recently, uh, we basically stepped aside from being event promoters to being event producers and uh, became pretty much the uh, preferred stage audio event coordination company for the tri-county areas, cities and districts. We became those guys who are kind of like de facto board members and just help out with everything from, you know, helping to coordinate, to book, to produce the shows. We, uh, we take a lot of pride in being pretty much Seminole County's event uh, partner. Uh, we worked with Lynn and the city of Casper for over 15 years and their jazz fest are second to none, even in the, in the state of Florida. We do a lot of stuff for Winter Springs, for, um, for uh, Cranes Roost and Altamont, uh, and uh, obviously we've been in the trenches many times with Dustin for Hurricane Party and Christina for Oktoberfest and both of them for the beast that is Jingle Jam. Uh, so we, we had a lot of fun in downtown Sanford and uh, a shameless plug, but this month we have a lot happening in, in our backyard here in Lake Mary. Obviously we have St. Patty's Day at Liam's, which is going to be absolutely nuts on Friday the 17th. But at the end of the month, on the 25th to 26th, we're working with Brian in the city of Lake Mary. We have, uh, what we got? We got Jimmy Buffett, uh, Garth Brooks, Def Leppard, Queen, and Bon Jovi at Oval Park. Now tributes, tribute acts. <laughs> so, 
But the great thing about this is if you act like the second song, the second beer, you just squint and you start singing along. It's awesome. So. <laughs> but and then this weekend coming up, we have Lake Mary Arts Fest at, at Colonial Town Park. And uh, and I one of my many roles there, I'm in charge of the beer. So if anybody comes and says, I saw you at the chamber meeting, the first beer is on me. That's a Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> And we also work with uh, galas and stuff like that and help the Sharing Center and the Kids House and, and some other events. So we're really proud to kind of be those guys in Seminole County that you call. So thank you. Sorry. Let's, let's hear from the musician on our panel, Dave Schweitzer. Hello. <laughs> Woo! Uh, I have to say, Alan, when you invited me, I thought this was a uh, complete podcast, so I wasn't expecting anybody to be here. Um, my name is David Schweitzer. Uh, I started playing music at a young age, uh, just always loved music, and so when I uh, was in high school, uh, formed a band with a bunch of guys from Winter Park, and it turned out to be very successful, and we were playing in, in bars underage and having a great time and I met a lot of really cute girls and I thought, well this is working. Um, so I just kept kind of doing that and uh, actually um, I've done a lot of things uh, but music has always been kind of the thread of, of, of my life and I feel like music to me as a musician is a way for me to give back to the community. And I think all the people that I play with feel the same way. Uh, we don't make a whole lot of money doing it. We make some money, but uh, you know, it's it's always been for me a joy to kind of give back to the community. So um, I've been playing all my life in different bands, different uh, uh, forms of music. I've done a lot of. Uh, you you mentioned the barnyard jam. So when when my kids were young, I put out a children's record and then followed it up with. Uh, a live puppet show and uh, had the privilege of working with Heather Henson, who's Jim Henson's daughter. And so um, we've put together this, uh, well, that, that show I put together, but I've done another show with her called um, Sing Along with the Muppet Movie, which is a fantastic show that she and I co-produced and, and went out and toured with that. So I've done a lot of children's stuff, worked with PBS quite a bit, um, and now, Currently, still playing gigs as a solo artist and also have a band called Life on Mars, which is a six-piece band, and we're doing a lot of the big city events at the uh, Popke Amphitheater and Crane's Roost, and we also play uh, <coughs> locally. I play every, for 20-plus years now. I've played at the House of Blues um, once a week, pretty much consistently except through COVID. So. I've had the fortune of having a long career uh, playing music, and and uh, it's been fun. So you know what it was like before COVID, during COVID, after COVID. We'll stick with David and ask him what your opinion is. We'll we'll move in my direction. What's your opinion on the state of the music industry today? Well, I think because of COVID, man, the first time we started playing, I mean, people were so ready to hear live music again. And it was, um, um, and I think they still are. I think this is, uh, you know, I, with, with what you saw at Porch Fest and, and every, like every live event we have, there are a lot of people coming to every show we do. Um, House of Blues is always busy, but even on our, our local shows in different venues, people are coming out to see live music. People love live music. Um, so I, I think it's, you know, obviously um, the COVID thing, everything shut down, but I think it's, uh, it's great to be in a room with a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah. So what's your opinion on the state of the industry today? I mean, on that COVID note, uh, one of the things that we noticed, and obviously our whole industry shut down, it was, it was unfortunate, but it's weird. It's like the, you almost like, you know, one of those things that you miss the most because you could watch TV at home, you could do all these things with your family, or whatever, but people really miss that live experience. And it's honestly being around people and being able to like hang out, sing along, stuff like that. So, I mean, music is, you know, the biggest community, you know. Uh, gathering thing. I mean, it's it's the core of, of everything. But uh, it, it, the one thing that hurt was that towns were quiet. They were quiet at night. The cities were quiet. The streets were quiet. So people got used to that. 
And unfortunately, when we came back from it, we started noticing that like the noise ordinance and the permits were being like, well, we're getting complaints at 10 o'clock about music now. We're like, oh, dude, this is downtown, downtown Sanford. This is downtown Orlando. You're supposed to have music. Was music goes till 2 a.m. But like, no, no, people complaining. And it's because people had it quiet for a year and a half, two years. So we started to see those permits start to kick in and events starting to have an end earlier or just being, I don't want to call it harassment, everybody's doing their job, but we started seeing like the, the DB levels and immediately when we'd fire up a, a band like Supervillains at Soundcheck, somebody would be like, uh, let's go ahead and turn that down a little bit. You know, we just act like we're turning it down and just keep going. But it, uh, <laughs> it's unfortunate because it really changed the paradigm of how we have to interact now with cities and events. And everything did become more strict and kind of more limited. And I know this is something that everybody can vent about up here. But that's just one of the, the big things that we noticed. Yeah, you tell the supervillains to turn it down. I'm not going to do that. Uh, Shelly, how about uh, uh, what your opinion is on the state of the industry? And also, what do you attribute the, just the giant turnout that you got to PorchFest to? Um, I think that those go hand in hand with what we were talking about before as far as this year's um, turnout. I think that you know, music is the universal language that connects us, no matter who you are, what you believe, where you live. Um, I think all of us have that pivotal song lyric that just drills down into your core and you know represents who you are and I think that that's something that um, music just unifies people unlike anything else um, so coming out of COVID when we were all kind of like living our own lives not sure what's going on to be able to uh, in porch fest you know <laughs> we got in there right before COVID was a thing <laughs> But then we came back the next year. So we got really lucky um, as far as like when everything shut down and when everything was lifted, we fell right in between those two things. So um, seeing the, the turnout uh, during the COVID year and beyond, it's, it's just incredible. We, we double our attendance every year. But to get back to the point, um, I think we're just all in this state where we need to feel connected again. And I think that music does that beautifully. Um, and as far as like attributing the success of turnout, um, I think there's a couple factors there. One is the community. Um, Porchfest seems to put community at the forefront of everything from the way it's ran to um, the way that the music community in Central Florida, they, it, they're just so impressive. It is a sense of community everywhere you look, everybody's friends, everybody works together. Um, and the, the group of people that are representing the music industry in Central Florida is one of the most passionate groups I've ever encountered in my life. Um, secondly, Sanford is a very unique place. Um, you know, I'm born and raised in Seminole County, Winter Park area, and I moved to Sanford. And when I moved, people didn't understand why I was going. I didn't even understand. But the moment I stepped foot onto that ground, I was like, wow, okay. Sanford is uh, very much thought of as the underdog of Central Florida, and that has bred a very passionate group of residents and business owners. And so they really, really rally around their community. Um, and so when you bring on an event like Sanford Porch Fest that is just all about community, um, it, it turns into what it is. And also, I mean, when you put 70 bands on the front porches of homes, which is a really unique setting, make it family friendly and free, I mean, that kind of sells itself, so. Jessica, what's your opinion on the state of the industry right now? It's in an interesting place. Um, it's, it's growing again. It's like we reached this um, space a few years back to where it, it grew again and there were a lot of healthy bands. There were a lot of musicians who were pretty, um, had, had worked for a while to become established and they had and it was this crop of, of incredibly talented people who were all, all kind of came up in the scene at the same time. And I feel like that's happening again right now from the perspective of knowing and booking a lot of the um, up and coming musicians in the, the 
uh, Orlando and um, Sanford area, Seminole and Orange counties specifically, I work with a lot of musicians in both of those uh, counties. And I would say, I think that right now I'm seeing a whole lot of new musicians um, who are taking a chance and playing and really starting to establish themselves or getting to that next step um, and starting to be uh, working more, forming bands if they were in a solo project and really coming into their own. And then newer bands stepping up um, who, who through the ranks and now becoming uh, more of like the scene stalwarts. It's a, it's a cool thing to see happen. Um, and I just think that the whole scene in general, musicians, uh, and uh, the venues that they, that they play are all um, experiencing growth. And, and it's an interesting transition. There's more going on than I've ever seen before. There's more venues popping up on a smaller scale. There's uh, just so much happening all the time. It um, it's, can be a little bit dizzying. I'm typically seen as somebody who people will say, what's going on tonight, Jessica? And I can say, well, you go here if you like this, or you go, go check out this music here, or if you're into this style, you know, go over there. But it's, it's almost getting hard for me to personally keep up with it uh, all because there's just so many options and so much happening. Uh, Dustin, uh, what's your opinion of the state of the industry right now? Uh, I think it's doing really well. I mean, coming out of COVID, uh, you know, I had a hard time keeping my venue booked Friday, Saturdays for a month straight. Uh, right now, and we're booked three, four days a week, every week for the next three months. Bands are touring again. Bands are coming out again. Uh, the fans are coming out to see them excited to come out. Our festivals have, the same like Porch Fest, saying our numbers in the last two years have really grown a lot. Um, so I think the industry is doing good. I think there's a lot of new talent out there that's excited to get on the road and start touring. Uh, I think it's in a really good spot right now. Let me just follow up with a question that's just for you because you're so involved in that downtown Sanford scene. What does it need uh, to continue to grow? What does it need to go to the next level, in your opinion? Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, so really, you know, Sean kind of touched on this. A lot of things that kind of hold up uh, the growth for events like this a lot of times is code city uh, ordinances things like that um, having the city back you and uh, you know be a part of these events making them more of community events uh, having the residents the same like porch fest the reason that's such a great event is because the entire community is involved in that event um, having the city and the community back you is really the only way we can grow these events uh, Jessica question for you uh, what since you're one of the big promoters here in the industry, what can the community at large, uh, what can your side of the business do to make sure that locals and if visitors, because we have so many of them, know what's going on here? Marketing. <laughs> uh, marketing, marketing, marketing. Uh, I think, as I said, there's so much happening, so how do you cut through and make sure that you reach people to let them know. Um, with so many different events uh, on, on smaller scales and larger scales um, happening, what, what do you do to reach people and make sure they're showing up to your event? Uh, I think that the key is, is first reaching them and then letting them know um, why they would enjoy that. Or if they're not familiar with a band, uh, making sure that they understand who they are, what they're about, what their music's like. Um, and marketing doesn't necessarily translate to me. It doesn't necessarily translate into um, advertising dollars spent. It can sometimes be more grassroots and uh, word of mouth. And, and you have to, I think, engage the artists. And one of the things that I think on a bigger scale that I'm not seeing happening a lot, which is a shame because we have such a wealth of talent to choose from, is I'm not seeing our mid-sized venues, uh, you know, the spaces that hold 1,200 to 2,500 people. I'm not seeing a lot of uh, touring bands being... Um, 
being op- being fronted by or being uh, I'm I'm not seeing a lot of locals opening these shows, and I think that that's a big mistake on those promoters or those talent buyers for those venues uh, part because. Uh, that's somebody who's going to promote the show, sell tickets, market it directly to locals. And we have, as I said, such a wealth of talent and people who would love to open for uh, Lucinda Williams or um, uh, I'm drawing a blank on different... Drive-by truckers at the Ace Cafe coming up There next you month. go. Yeah, so, um, so I think that when you're looking for help with marketing your event and uh, I think it's it's to take it back to the, the community engage people um, create street teams and um, utilize the local talent that you have give them a spotlight and give them a voice and get them involved let me ask Sean about that because you know we've got some pretty decent mid-sized venues in uh, Orlando but you know we still have to go to Tampa to see a lot of shows um, you know, what's making it difficult for us to book these sort of between the 1,200 and 3,500 seat venues, do you think? Uh, that's something that we've actually complained about for years, uh, and that's really with the advent of House of Blues and Hard Rock, uh, and really the theme parks, Universal and everything, because we, we joke, and I actually even sit with Jim Maloney from House of Blues, and, he'll, he, and this guy from Live Nation, he books the whole Southeast, and he's like, this is the hardest town per capita, or hardest area per capita to book in all of America, simply because we only have, what, like four million people total. We're not, we're not nothing compared to New York or, or LA or Chicago, but we have on any given night between the Convention Center and Universal's Mardi Gras and Disney's uh, Food and Wine Fest and House of Blues and Hard Rock who have incentives to keep the rooms full for their, their property managers, we have literally thousands of, of very high-end performers, you know, performing. I'll call an agent for, say, City of Kissimmee or, or, or one of the, or, or Sanford song, I'll call an agent from, just say, All American Rejects, and, and be like, you know, are they available? How much are they? And they'll be like, 100 grand. I'm like, dude, 100 grand? They're like, 40 grand, you know? What have they done in the last 20 years? So it'd be double. He's like, well, we get 100 grand in Orlando. I'm like, no, you don't, man. You go to, you go to Universal, it's a $160 ticket. So you have 30,000 people paying $160. They're not there to see you, but, you know, you're, they can pay you 100 grand. The average city's like 20, 30, $40,000 budget. So it's really one of those towns where, like, in a house of blues, they're selling, what is it, $12, $14 beers, but they have incentive by Disney to keep that room full every night. Same with Hard Rock and all the private corporate shows. So it's almost impossible to call an agent and get a fair rate for the city of Orlando. And then obviously, you know, people like Mike McCraney down at Social and, and Foundation and, and Beecham get all the small level stuff, and then they graduate it to those venues. But we joke, it's just like when, when a city will ask, hey, can I book a headliner for 4th of July? I got 20 grand to spend. We're like, man, I'd, I'd give you a list of people you never heard of for 20 grand. The agents won't even talk to us in Orlando. So it's a challenge. It's always been a challenge. Um, the good thing is we do have a lot of smaller to mid-level venues that stay full. So we have an amazing, like, like Jessica said, an amazing amount of talent has always come out of here. It might be because of the fact that there's always been competition. Like guys like this will be playing and the people in front of them were Rob Thomas from Matchbox 20 and all these other bands. And these guys were, and the, you know, the guys from NSYNC from the theme parks, they'd go to the Sapphire to see these guys play and they support each other. But the music was so good, they'd be competing with each other. And when you have that level of competition, this quality keeps going up. And then what's great is we have people booking Will's Pub and booking uh, West End at Sanford or booking the social that know music, that love music, that will curate that music. And every scene needs these curators like this, this panel that literally care more about the locals than they do the nationals, trying to get them on those tours when they're coming through. And then honestly, in the studio, I mean, this guy's doing national stuff, you know, for, for Henson. I mean, that you guys never even knew was coming out of here. We have over in Longwood, behind the batting cages, we have Plush Studios, and Ethan Curtis has a number 10 single in America right now, this artist named Jake. I mean, the guy's blowing up. He's on, on, at Times Square on New Year's Eve. You don't know that, but that was produced over in Longwood, you know, and down the road from here, it, probably about half a mile behind the golf course, we had a producer that lived here for years that produced Shine Down, Paramore, uh, you name it, Mandy Moore originally. And then, you know, whether you like it or not, over Lake Sylvan Park, or that area, you have the biggest metal producer in America with Mark Lewis. I mean, 
Cannibal Corpse is hanging out over by the soccer fields producing on any given night. So we have a very, very thriving scene, and it's cool because on every level we have curators that really care, and we have the talent and the people in the studios that can take that to the next level. So it's hard to really complain about what's going on in the scene, actually. It's a, it's a thriving scene. So. Every bit of it, too. I mean, we have a Grammy Award-winning uh, hip-hop producer yep. in downtown Orlando, and I, I think it's every part of the music industry is represented here with creators. And none of it has anything to do with Lou Perman. There you go. <laughs> so, so, so let's start with Davey, because I think I might only have time for one more. Um, you know, so you've mentioned some of the acts that have made it out of here. Seven, Mary, Three, Creed, Matchbox 20, many more. Um, is there something, Davey, that you think is going to come out of here? And if the answer is, I don't think so right now, Give them in the audience a recommendation for somebody local to go and see. Oh, that might be Jessica. She, she's way more on top of the scene. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting because um, things have definitely changed with social media. And I'm going to give you an example. Um, my, my son and daughter um, started a band with my, my drummer's son. They put out a little album that they produced in their, um, basically in the living room, and I stayed out of the way. I helped them master it, but I pretty much stayed out of the way. They put it on TikTok and got 3.4 million views, wow. and then started getting calls from record labels. Wow. So, for. When we were doing, you know, when, when I was recording all these albums, you know, in the 90s and the early 2000s, you know, that just wasn't available. Um, so I think there's such a wider audience, even for a, a local musician. Um, uh, so anyways, I think uh, you, that has changed for people who are trying to make it in, in the industry. Um, but um, as far as um, who do I think is up and coming, I would probably, I don't get to go out as much. I, I, <laughs> yeah, right, me exactly. Either. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I mean, about, I think. About the 502s. The 502s yeah. are great. The 502s are breaking out. Like, yeah, they were they a TikTok. Are. They kind of, they're great. They played Porsche Fest. They, they mm -hmm. one of the great fun rock, almost like a, what do you call, folk rock. Folk. Yeah. It's like an indie fiddle. folk pop yeah they're with great. like this sunshine <laughs> soul but that you, you guys so knew about positive. them for years yeah. but tiktok took them to the next level right yes, like kind of doing yeah. fun stuff social there, media you know? has really helped them and they mm -hmm. they don't play around orlando all that often and when they do they always have a fantastic show mm -hmm. but they're road dogs yeah. now they've been in they europe are. for the last few yep. months yep and yeah. and they just played bonnaroo this last year and i think yeah. the year before but this last year they played like one of the big tents and it was packed i saw a video from it Shelly, <laughs> somebody you would either so say is going to get out or or yeah, somebody I, you would recommend they go see i would agree with the 502s um i'm actually traveling to chattanooga for a sold out music festival that they are on the bill for so i was really excited to see them knowing that they're a local band um this is a loaded question for me, just because you know, I, you don't want to give a shot. You can't. You I mean, it's just like, oh, wait, but how do you pick your favorite? How child? do you pick your favorite? And <laughs> yeah, exactly, going on public record for your favorite. Um, I will say that there's one for for us, uh, Porch Fest, that stands out. Um, she's actually in Asheville recording a new record right now. Um, is Cat Ridgeway. Cat oh, Ridgeway is the awesome. other. Like, she, oh, yeah. she, yeah. her raw talent Twitter, and yeah. just tenacious grit. Um, she's a sunshine soul as well. Like you just can't help but like you leave her and you're like, why can't I? Like like you can't put your smile down. Like your cheeks are permanently stuck there. Um, but she, I would watch her closely. Uh, I would say within the next year she will be a national act. She's like our, our Janis Joplin, it. man. And, she's yep, amazing. She's from yeah. Sanford, um, yep. and she's phenomenal. She was our headliner this year, yeah. and uh, we, we just love her. And uh, she's been working and, and gigging. I think I've been booking her 
in rooms around the Central Florida area since she was about 16. Mm -hmm. Dustin, being almost out of time, is there someone that you either think is going to make it or someone you'd like the audience to go and see? I agree completely with uh, what they're ta- who they're talking about. Absolutely, Cat Ridgeway is great. Um, I, for me, there's so many local guys. Like you said, you can't really pick one. I, you, for me, like uh, last weekend, we did our after party with the Shabooms. The Shabooms is a phenomenal band. I mean, their lead singer used to sing with Justin Timberlake. It's just nothing but talent and energy on the stage. And there's a lot of bands like that out there that's hard to to try to list them all, but yeah. And that band that opened for them, the Blue Streak Mamas. The Blue Streak Mamas. (laughs) First time that I saw those guys, and they were awesome. They're they're fantastic. They brought so much energy to the room. So let me just wrap this up by telling a, a kind of a story and that is a, a dear friend a great musician and uh, very important to the local scene recently had a serious health issue and um, was hospitalized for a good bit of time ha- and has now been able to come home and recover and, and a band that he has been in for many years um, that is not all that active but they'll play a show every once in a while is going to be at Tuffy's in Sanford next month And I don't know how many more shows they will get to do, so I would highly recommend to the audience that if you want to go see a real rock act, uh, Shaq Nasty is going to be at uh, Tuffy's next month, and they are are just wonderful. They're phenomenal. And it's sort of like this mix of funk, soul, jazz, rock, rock, fusion. It's, they're fantastic. Uh, they will make you smile. They will make you dance. They will make you happy to be alive. All right. Uh, we'll do one question from the audience. Uh, I can see somebody right there in the front. Has the last 25 years in the cal- yeah. concert calendar. I apologize. Oh, I was ready. Hi, I'm Maya Caleb from the Starfish App. Um, my question is, if you have a young artist at home, um, how do you get them to participate in one of the events or some of the events? I, I think that, uh, come, you know, a lot of us starting out in this industry as entertainers, um, the one thing, you know, we talk about social media has changed a lot of how you can come up in the industry. Uh, I still think that the same thing I tell everybody that wants to stand up or start doing uh, music, hit the open mic nights, get out there, get your face seen, hit the road, do three, four open mic nights a week if you can. When I first started doing stand up, I was doing open mic nights like five nights a week at least, sometimes two shows a night just to kind of get out there and get the experience, learn how to be on stage, learn how to speak into a microphone. Uh, The only way you can do that is by getting out there and doing it. And when you're out there, be social, meet people. Don't just wait for your turn to play, get up, play and, and leave. Make sure that you are networking. Just like we're here, networking, meeting each other, learning how we can support each other and our endeavors. It's the same thing with musicians. Yeah, the, uh, the social media killed the music scene everywhere, not just here, but everywhere. And honestly, it used to be you'd go to a bar and you'd see 30 or 40 people watch Dave play. They're all other band members and his girlfriends. But uh, I mean, honestly, when <laughs> Facebook came out, then Instagram, or Rob Thomas's girlfriends, it depended on the night, but <laughs> joking like Brantley grad. But, uh, so the, the main thing is, that we used to go and like flyer to each other, be like, oh, cool, you were great, come see me at Will's next week, or come see me at the junkyard. So everybody was like supporting each other. The music scene was just musicians and, and family members. And so it, when you could post on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, it killed that. Because a, a kid will play in their garage and then post something and be like, cool, come to my show. It's like, well, who are you communicating with? You know, you don't really even engage with people on social media. So it just really killed the concept of the music scene and the core of the music scene. So like Jessica's saying, get out there and, and go and support other artists that are kind of like-minded, like genre, and introduce yourself. And then be like, oh, what, do you, what, what are you playing now? You know, maybe we can jam together sometime or maybe we can do another show in my neighborhood or vice versa and just support each other and piggyback shows. And eventually you start to create that scene again, which sounds like is, is coming back around. Around, so. Go ahead, Shelly. I, I would say just encourage them to find themselves in their own persona, their own music. Um, when I'm looking at bands for Porch Fest, I don't look for the ones that sound like the next one. I want to find the ones that I'm like, this, this person really has something. Um, and that's shown through just a genuine passion of what they're doing. So I know... Um, you know, don't don't let them get lost in what they think they should sound like or what they think they should 
you know, project. Because their, their passion and, and their talent will, will shine through their genuine self. Dave, you want to wrap this up? Um, I, I just, I agree with what everybody said. I think just having that, you know, the experience of getting in front of people. Also, um, there's so many ways now that everybody can record at home and just to kind of, you know, but to go down and, and hand a club owner or somebody um, some of their music, but for definitely stay true to what, what music is to, to your daughter or son and, um, and stay true to that and, and just stay on that path, so. I'm gonna bring Rebecca back up here. How about a big round of applause for our panel today? Thank you so much. You guys want to just hang out there while I do the quick wrap up and then I'm sure they won't run away so you can ask them questions but thank you guys so much for being here and um, you know when you go see live acts don't forget to give your children you know money to go tip them or else you're gonna have a very angry six-year-old I even know this from experience <laughs> <laughs> thanks for listening to learn more about the Seminole County Chamber please visit SeminoleBusiness.org or check us out on our social media at Seminole County Chamber.